This video is going to attempt to show how to replace the emergency brake shoes in a Mercedes ML350 4Matic four-wheel drive. So far all I've done is remove the wheel. We have these little, there's like little plastic blocks protecting the sub, the frame down here. So I've got the I've got the vehicle supported here. The reason we're doing this job is because when you turn the rotor, you can hear a scraping noise. Listen. My friend came to me and thought that he had a bad wheel bearing. But that sound isn't the sound of a wheel bearing. It's the sound of the rusted inside of the drum rubbing against the brake shoes. At least it was on the other side and I believe it's the same over here. I also tried to push away the dust shield to make sure that wasn't making making any of the noise. But this sound is coming from inside the drum. So the first thing I'm going to do here with this caliper is I'm going to, there's a little plastic cover so we need to remove this cover and then I believe this, I can feel there's a hex, a hex, uh, indented hex bolt right there. And then there's a second one right down here. So I'll pull the cover off that one too. All right, so we need to find out what size hex this is. These two bolts, then we can remove the front part of the front, the, well, we can remove the caliper. Then we'll get the, uh, there's some larger bolts that hold the, the bracket on. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to be on the safe side, here on the, the passenger side, is I'm going to pull this little clip, this little wire that goes down to one of the brake pads. And secondly, while it's easy and convenient, we'll, we can pry off this, pry off this clip Okay, so we got that sort of uh, the brake pad hold down clip. Yeah, there we go. So these are probably, I don't know what the torque is right now, probably 18 foot pounds would be my totally random guess. So as you can see we've got the bolt or the pin you probably technically call it. We've got the lower pin uh, completely out of the caliper and same thing with the upper pin. It looks like, looks like that out of the caliper. All right, now we will pry the caliper off the caliper bracket. Screwdriver in there. See, we've got movement in the caliper. And then be careful not to pull the caliper too far because you've got the You've got the uh, sensor wire leading into the caliper here, so I want get, to get this out of the way. Um, the pad looks pretty good, so, well, you know, I'm going to pull it out anyways. Do I want to do that? Yeah, sure. And you'll see this is why you need to be careful about that wire. Um, this pad is frozen. This should be moving. It's not moving at all. So that's not cool. So 
So this person didn't, at the very least, they only had one brake pad stopping this wheel. Okay, so we'll have to we'll have to grind this down, clean up all that rust that was holding this in place. Uh, the pad itself doesn't look bad in terms of thickness. If you can see that. There it goes. All right, so I loosen that. That's cool. I might as well just take it right out. This happens to be a T30 Torx bit. And as I said, that just goes to help secure the, the uh, rotor drum on here. And now I'm going to remove these two caliper bolts. I think they're set 17 or 18 or 19 millimeters around the back. These are going to require some, some serious force to, to get those loose. So here are the two bolts holding the caliper bracket in place. Uh, and as I said, they've got pretty high torque. We've got a 19 millimeter socket that'll fit on there. I'm going to use a ratchet and a cheater pipe and take these out and then we should be able to remove the, the bracket. With the bracket out, then we can take the rotor off and expose the emergency brake shoes underneath. You can see the uh, caliper bracket rattling around a little bit now. So here comes number two with the brake, and that was the bracket. So you can see it's starting to move. So let's see if we can wiggle this thing off. Here we go. Awesome. And here's the inside part, the drum, it's all sort of rusty. Here are the shoes. I should say. And I'm going to give you a close-up of this just so you can see how this is how this is uh, situated. In case you get this apart, you can't remember how it went back together again. So this is how it looks from the front. You can see the adjuster up there. And there's one spring holding the top part of the shoes together near the adjuster. And then at the bottom, you can see this is a little lever that comes from the emergency brake cable. Then you see another spring with a longer, a longer straight part that goes to the bottom of each shoe. Also notice that the shoe has got this rounded lobe at the bottom. It does not have that at the top. So in case you try to reassemble these and forget which side is which, the rounded part goes down at the bottom down there and the not rounded part is up at top where the adjusters are now there are there are two hold down pins you can see one see one right there and you can see the other one which is you can see the other one which is really rusty and shagged out right there on they go through the backing plate and on the other side of the plate as you turn them they line up with with the notch that's on the plate so 
In order to get these shears off, we have to take each of these screws and turn them 90 degrees and it will release, it'll release the shoe from the backing plate. Just so you can see what the, uh, the back of those hold down screws look like, that's the back one right there. So that thing has to twist 90 degrees and then it will come out. So that's the back side of that hold down pin that we talked about. And obviously there's another one on the other side. Oh, there it is. So that's that's the back of the pin. So we're gonna we're gonna twist this 90 degrees. All right, that did it. This shows you how the bottom of that pin works. It's got a wide section and a narrow section. 90 degrees. It should be 90 degrees, more or less. And there it is. I'm also going to take the time just to spray some water on here, cut down the amount of brake dust coming coming off. Catch the catch the water in a bucket and then get rid of it. Better to not breathe in brake dust than to breathe it in, I'm sure. Buddy the rescue dog. Hi buddy, are you helping? Yeah, okay, you're helping, maybe. Okay, so now we're going to remove the springs in no particular order because I don't know if you're supposed to. I got a bite on it. Pull it down. We will release that top spring. And we can remove the adjuster. You can see right here. Even as rusty as it lo looks, the uh, adjuster was lubricated and not rusty on the inside, so that's interesting. And then, that's it. And then, out comes the, fr the front shoe. All right. And here's the spring with the long, the long straight part on the bottom. Okay, so you see, here's the, here's the front shoe that we can remove. And then, just to show you how this sort of works, that when you pull on the emergency brake cable, which is right there, when you pull on it, it opens this up. It opens that up and pushes the pads further apart and stops your vehicle in the case of an emergency. I'm uh, not sure if you can see this, this is a brake hardware kit. I believe it was $33 from AutoZone. It's a H7977 and has new hold down springs, new springs in it, and uh, has a new adjuster in it as well. So. Now we got to go 90 degrees, and that's it. Okay, going to push this down. 
Okay, go 90 degrees. At least I'm getting good at this part. The lower spring that's got those long arms on it, and then the upper spring. So I guess I'll try to do the lower spring first for no particular reason. You'll just have to take my word for it that that's what I'm doing. I'm using this long Phillips head to go inside the spring and pry it up to that hole, which it is just about right. Now, and that's it. So that's a good method. And we got that connected amazing. That's a lot of tension as well. All right, so let's get, get down there. Oh, we're so close, there we go. There we go. I just gotta push it in. And that's it. So just by way of warning, I just wanted to show you, here we are on the driver's side, um, where we're doing the emergency brake shoes. And in this case, when I was pulling the drum off, the, the shoe must have wedged in the drum and it pulled, so the, so the hold down pin pulled right through this a little bit crappy uh, back backing plate. So I just used, and so this was all pulled out and I just used a vise like this. Let's see if I can sort of show you this. I just used a big vise to put this on here and then flatten, flatten this thing back out. You can still see it's got a little mark here, uh, a little like piece of torn metal, which I might be able to, I can gas weld, but even if I don't, you can see the pin goes in, turn it 90 degrees, and basically it'll still, it'll still work. So, if you're pulling the drum off and it, it just won't come, it's worth going around the opposite side where my finger is here and get a, just get a, uh, a pair of pliers and just turn it 90 degrees so that the shoe can come out more or less with the drum and the shoes will bend forward and you should be able to slide the, slide the drum over the floppy shoes. But you don't really want to wreck this spot because you wouldn't be able to install your new shoes if this thing's so damaged that it can't hold if it can't hold the pin in place. So so that's just a word of caution when you're doing this job. If the rotor won't come off, the shoes won't let go, then you can release them from the back. That way the pins don't break through this backing plate. So I brought, so I bought new AutoZone uh, rotors, drum rotors. I think they're about a hundred and six dollars a piece. So here's the Duralast brake pads, Duralast Max, and these were pretty inexpensive, maybe forty-five dollars for both sides. Not much money if you own a Mercedes, which I don't. See how this goes. Awesome.
There we go. So this will move the shoes out a little bit. Somebody to push on the emergency brake again. I can move it a little bit. Let me go to four. Four. Yep. Lord, that's lovely. I'm not. So I've really got to get the rust off, off these little passageways. So I'm going to just use a little cutoff wheel to clean that up. install this and install the caliper the pads and the caliper and then put it all back together don't entirely quote me on it look it up yourself if you want to do this unscrewed the cap to the brake fluid bottle in the engine compartment just in case it overf would overflow. All right. All right, so that's all pressed in. And there it goes. Here's the rear pad. Here's the front pad. I'll get the guide pins. All right, so you can see I've got the, I've got these guide pins for the caliper all cleaned up, and I'm just going to put some grease on them. The bottom pin has started. But anyways, so that's that. That's good. 